and welcome. In this video, we'll be creating a Vulkan instance. A Vulkan instance is similar to an OpenGL context. It's a binding between our program and the Vulkan library. So we can actually start doing some Vulkan stuff. Let's get into it. Firstly, we'll make a class variable to store our uh, instance, and then we'll create a function inside our init Vulkan routine to create the instance. Now, note this uh, pattern which is used to create the instance. A lot of Vulkan um, objects work this way. In order to create something, we first make a um, struct of some kind. In this case, it's you know application info and create info. And then we populate the data members of the struct with the parameters which are used to create the thing. Then we pass a pointer to that struct into the um, creation function. Now, um, this method of creating a struct, populating it, and then passing it in is neater and more readable than a comma, you know, separated list of parameters, which is probably the reason that Vulkan went with this um, design decision. Um, in larger C programs, this is very common. Um, also, a side note, I don't think Vulkan is doing it, doing this at this point, but um, it's common with multi-threaded programs to use this pattern because when a thread is spawned, it needs to run, it needs to have a thread function basically. And the, um, oh, what's the, word? the prototype for that thread function can only take a single pointer as its parameter. So for that reason, it's beneficial to pass in, you know, a pointer to all of the uh, data members. However, I do not believe that Vulkan is spawning a new thread to create this instance because otherwise there would be um, scheduling issues. Um, and this really isn't the place to start dealing with race conditions when the process of creating instances and everything that comes after it is so sequential. There's no parallelization benefit to that. So I don't think that's happening, but it is a common pattern. Okay. Um, also note the names of some of these data members for the struct. Um, some of them start with P. P stands for pointer. Now the way C handles strings is as a character pointer, um, really as a list of characters. So um, what it does is it stores a pointer to the location of the first character, and then we can loop through that. So anything with a string, generally you'll see a P because it's a character pointer. Okay. Also note the use of the ampersand character over here. In C++ and C, this is called the um, uh, reference operator. So for an object, it takes the memory location of that object in virtual memory and returns that. Cool. Um, Uh, also worth noting, of course, because pointers themselves are variables, we can have pointers to pointers, and pointers to pointers to pointers, and so on. Uh, Vulkan is platform agnostic. It just makes graphics. In order to use it correctly, we need to use extensions. GLFW has a function which returns the list of extension names which it needs in order to run properly. So we call this uh, glfw get extensions and store its result. Um, over here, note also these curly bra uh, these braces are equivalent to this. However, when we use the equal sign, this is um, creating a copy of the number zero and then copying it into the variable. And when we use direct initialization, that's with the braces, it kind of just hard codes the number in without a copy step. So it pretty much does the same thing, just a little bit faster. And I'm pretty sure the compiler already optimizes that out anyway, so 
not a big deal, I just wanted to show that. Um, here, glfw is a list of strings. Each string is a character pointer. And then to get a list of them, we need a pointer to the first string, if that makes sense. So uh, this double pointer means an array, a list of strings. The way C treats arrays, pretty much, is it just treats an array as a pointer to the first element with the understanding that if we keep uh, iterating through, keep stepping through, we will go through all of the other elements in the list. Okay, um, so this get required extensions um, does two things. It returns a list of the extensions, which GLFW needs, and it also needs to return the number of those. So um, functions do not have, generally do not have multiple return. Um, so a common pattern to get around this is um, we have something that gets returned and then we also take the pointer to this number and we put that in. The function in its internal workings accesses this number and sets it to the number of extensions and then exits. So a side effect of running this function is that we, um, this extension count gets set correctly. Okay, so then we pass this in, extension count, and then remember we had a double pointer over here, so we have two P's out in the front of the name. So this P corresponds to a pointer. Anyway, so we create our instance, and if it's successful, then it returns VK success, otherwise, uh, we will need to throw an exception to indicate that it was not done correctly. Um, also note this second parameter here. Uh, this is what's called a custom allocator point, uh, custom allocator callback. So when we create something, we're actually allocating some uh, memory. And we might be working in a very niche situation where we're in an edge case where we know we can write a memory allocator, which is more gets more performance than Vulkan's default allocator. Whatever Vulkan's version of malloc is, we might be able to beat that. So we have the option of passing in our own memory allocator function. Um, but for all of these videos, I'm just not going to do that because it's a little bit more advanced. And I don't think I'm going to be able to beat Vulkan's uh, default initializer. Anyway, so otherwise the code is pretty much the same. We poll events. Um, just note that when we clean up, we need to clean up properly. Okay, so it's true that when this program exits, it will automatically free up any memory which has been allocated, but it is good practice to still manage this ourselves. As our program gets bigger, it will become more important. For instance, if we have a video game and we keep switching between, uh, say, game mode and menu mode, we want to be destroying or freeing up all the memory that we were using each time. Otherwise, we could overload our RAM. Anyway, um, so we call this destroy instance. We pass in the um, instance that we're destroying. And again, we have the possibility of a custom deallocator function, which is pretty similar to this. If we want to write our own function to free up that memory, we can put that in. I'm not going to worry about that. Okay. Um, yeah. Otherwise, everything is the same as normal. So we run this. And it works. No news is good news, right? It hasn't thrown an exception. Which indicates that, um, that it's good. That it's working. Cool. Okay. So that's it for now. Code is linked in the description. So you can dig in and get familiar with it. And yeah. All the best. Bye.